All right, Bible and Daily Lifers, here we are. We are putting another book in the books. 1 Peter chapter 5, we'll be finishing it right now. Another book of the Bible. And we're getting near all of the books of the Bible. So if you've been with us for the whole year or any part of the year, we're, we're closing in. We're getting towards the end here. And I'm going to talk to the mirror today, if you don't mind. What does it mean you're going to talk to the mirror? Well, here we go. Chapter 5, 1 Peter. Peter being the one who was uh, in the inner circle of Jesus, although I actually think that it was the remedial group. Uh, Jesus uh, kept a couple of people close to him, uh, James and John, the two brothers, and Peter. And these were the guys that were always starting the trouble. So maybe Jesus was just keeping the troublemakers close to him. Or maybe it was his intimate circle. I don't know. Maybe you know. So, to the elders... Now, this word, presbuteros, shepherd, uh, elders, the olders, the ones who've been in this for a while. To the elders among you, I appeal. I love this about these guys. Uh, they're not ordering everybody around. They're not throwing around a bunch of religious authority. I appeal to you as a fellow elder, someone just like you. And a witness of Christ's suffering. Of course, he was a witness. He was there um, at the crucifixion. He was there denying Jesus around the fire, uh, the night of the crucifixion, the day of the crucifixion. A witness of Christ's suffering who will also share in the glory to be revealed. I love this, that these guys see themselves as equals and maybe even sub-equals. They um, see themselves as one of many, uh, having a particular role and having a particular call and having a particular purpose, but not any better than anybody else. And so he's appealing to them, and here's his appeal. Be shepherds, and that is kind of a play on words, because, you know, uh, elders and shepherds, you know, can be used sort of interchangeably, but be that as it may. Be shepherds of God's flock that's under your care, watching over them. Not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Now, there's an awful lot there. We could break it up into each one of those. But shepherd the flock. Keep the flock together. Feed the flock. Uh, Ezekiel talks about this where... He says that what the shepherds were doing in that day is they were fleecing the flock. And Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, you know that I do. And he said, then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know that I do. Then feed my sheep. So the shepherds are supposed to feed the sheep. They're supposed to watch out over the sheep. They don't own the sheep. It's not, it's not their flock. They're taking care of the flock for another. And what is it they're supposed to be doing? They're supposed to be feeding them supposed to be feeding them. And, and this is the, a big job of shepherds, is to feed the people. And what do you feed them? Well, the food that we have is the Word of God, teaching people the Word of God. Keep it simple. Be shepherd of God's flock that's under your care. Now, God's entrusted you to some people, so don't, don't use this or misuse this. Watching over them. Not because you must, you feel like, oh, I have to do this. Well, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. But because you're willing, just as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain. Now, the name of Jesus is pretty powerful. And people use the name of Jesus for a lot of stuff. And people use the name of Jesus to take advantage of people. They use the name of Jesus to scare people. They use the name of Jesus to get authority over people. I subscribe, and I probably should unsubscribe to it because it's negative sometimes. It's negative because it's true. Now, there's a lady, her name is Julie Royce. She used to be a radio host on, I believe, the Moody Radio Network in Chicago. And um, she kind of exposes corruption by church leaders. Most of the corruption that she um, reveals 
and she finds it, I guess, because people around the country send it to her. Most of what she reveals, and I'm telling you, she's got something every single day. Most of what she reveals is ministers that are using their positions of power uh, to take advantage of people relationally and sexually. And over and over and over again, she finds one after another after another. And they're falling right and left. At least it feels so. You know, maybe not so. Uh, you know, maybe it's just hundreds, hundreds out of the, you know, hundreds of thousands of churches, I guess, maybe that there are across the USA. But it, it's nevertheless distressing. I, I had the opportunity once to sit with a guy named Richard Dorch. And Richard Dorch was the right-hand man to a guy named Jim Baker. There was a uh, television program called the PTL Club. And the thing got huge. It got huge. Jim Baker gets snagged for sleeping with a girl. He, he then he gets snagged for some other stuff, and he ends up actually going to jail. And uh, Richard George went to jail as well. And it's a long story for what they went to jail for, and some would dispute that they even did anything wrong. But nevertheless, they ended up in jail. They were selling timeshares uh, at, at the resort that they had where the ministry was in People said they sold them and overbooked them and they were doing it across state lines and so it was some kind of federal offense. And maybe so. I don't want to argue whether it was or wasn't. But I, I got to sit with Richard George with about six people in a room after he got out of jail. And he said, we began to believe our own press. We began to believe that we were really something because multi-million dollar ministry, I mean, just millions and millions of dollars coming in, probably million dollars a day maybe at, at one point. I mean, the place was huge. It was unbelievable, the ministry. And he said, what we forgot was that we were small church pastors from Minnesota. He said, that's what we were. We were just small church pastors from Minnesota. And uh, for some reason, this ministry we were involved in exploded, and we really thought we were something. And we started to take big, big pieces of the pie for ourselves and we were really taking advantage of people. And so he wrote a book called Integrity. And uh, he, it's what he does now. He goes around. I don't know if he still goes around. He's probably ancient now. But going around just telling people to be careful and, and not use it for dishonest gain, but eager to serve, serving people, not lording it over them. You know, Jesus said this as well. He said, you know, the disciples, they wanted to be the first in the kingdom. And Jesus said, listen, he said, the rulers of the Gentiles rule over them and lord it over them. He said, that's not the way it's supposed to be with you, that whoever wants to be first should be the last. You need to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being an example. You do it first. You serve more. You give more. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the crown that will never fade away. So there you go. There's quite the reward. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to the elders, your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So let's be humble. God opposes the proud. I don't want to be proud. I don't want God to oppose me. I, I've had times in my life where I feel like God wasn't blessing me, but can you imagine him opposing me? Please, I don't want that. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. I love this one. This is such a good verse. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I need to be reminded of that. Be alert. Be sober-minded. Your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So there's an enemy trying to devour you, kill you, ruin you. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. You're not the only one going through this. And in fact, what you're going through is probably nowhere near as severe as what some other people are going through. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered for a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So when you get through this one, God's going to make you strong. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And then he closes with this, some personal words. With the help of Silas, whom I regarded as a faithful brother, I've written you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand in the grace of God. Stand in the grace of God. She who is in Babylon... I suppose you're supposed to know who she is. Chosen together with you, she sends her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. So, hugs and kisses, love, fellowship, bless you guys. We will be in Second Peter, which is a book, again, 
written to suffering Christians. So bless you in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.